It's time for another Dice Tower review with the Chief, Bart Brunsheen. The Chief from uh, the Dice Tower, this is Hamtag. The last time you guys all said Hamtag at the same time, I wasn't sure if you would again or not. Hamtag. 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 All right. Today, uh, we're stepping uh, for this episode out of the war game genre a little bit, which we'll be uh, apt to do every now and then. And we're going to talk about our favorite or top five Ameritrash games, our Hamtag Ameritrash games. Um, for this, why don't we start? Uh, why don't we start with you, okay. and then we'll just cycle it through. All right. A quick thing I want to say about Ameritrash. You know, it, it's tough to define Ameritrash, and I'll let others do that. But what I look for in this kind of game, and maybe it's because of my theater background, I like stories that are told in three acts. Mm -hmm. I like things that have an introduction, then have some conflict, and then have a resolution. A lot of Ameritrash games that I've seen don't have all three of those acts. A lot of times they do a good job of setting up who, the, who you are, the characters, in the story, you know, they might do the res the conflict very well, but the resolution just kind of fizzles out. So my top five Ameritrash games, in my opinion, have all three parts good. Defining who you are, having a conflict, and then the resolution. Mm -hmm. So my number five Ameritrash game is the old favorite, Robo Rally. This is the old version of Robo Rally. This is a computer programming game where you're, it's a race game where you program your robot through a maze in a factory. You, you program five moves ahead and that might be, you know, move ahead two spaces which gets you on a conveyor belt that moves you over one so you can turn left, move forward, turn right, back up one as you're moving from point to point to complete the race. The reason why I really like it is because um, it is partly because of just the geekiness involved with it. You know, you're, you're racing robots around mm -hmm. a factory, but the fun of the game is when people misprogram the robots. I don't know how many times we said, no, you wanted to turn to the other left as you get sent into the shredder or into the lasers. <laughs> so that's why I like this game. A lot of people, that I've talked to don't like the game because of how long it takes. And it can, if you set up too complex a track, mm -hmm. it can take a long time, but I don't play a game like this to see how quickly I can get done. It's the enjoyment of while I'm playing it, and then it's that last minute resolution when you actually complete your, your last turn to get to the last flag. So my number five Ameritrash game is Robo Rally. Now, it's Richard Garfield, right? I believe so. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw a little tidbit where he actually, he was trying to get that game funded, and he thought, well, I'll come up with a little card game, and maybe that'll help me fund Robo Rally, and the card game was Magic the Gathering. Wow. Huh. So, that's, I'd heard that. I, I think that's true. Tom may have told me that. I can't remember, but He's I king. thought, wow, that's a... That's a nice little way to fund Robo right, Rally. Right, right. So, That's King Midas. Yeah, yeah, everything <laughs> he touches. So, all right, mine is Battle Lore. Now, I have the older version, and I like the older version. I, I still like it. I haven't played the newer one yet. It uh, looks great. I've talked to some people that have played it. They said they like it. Um, it's that Memoir 44 um, or Ancients style with, uh, I'll go from the original one, with your... Um, kind of more traditional um, Middle Ages knights and armor kind of battles going on with some elementals thrown in and different things of that nature. So it's definitely got the Ameritrash feel. It's a light entry level fantasy warfare game. And uh, I think the new one, everybody says they like it even more. I've still been collecting the old stuff. So, but uh, I like it and it's my number five. I always said one of the easiest ways to tell the difference on Ameritrash just play, play Command and Colors Ancients and play that. Because they both have the battle back, the cavalry and stuff. But you start throwing spiders onto there and start throwing magic bolts around at people, you've suddenly tilted it into the world of Ameritrash. Right. And, and my definition of Ameritrash is, is uh, really pretty loose. It's just mainly theme. It might have a lot of bling thrown in on top of it, but it's the theme is what's driving mm -hmm. the game. 
theme and bling. That's even <laughs> better than, yeah. the, is that like the sum of that's all? That's good. Malevolence. No, I was going to say the, no. the, the sum of all theme and bling <laughs> because I want to, let's change it. First of all, that was cool. That was cool. And you're right. Theme and bling. Okay. Bling and theme. Good. Okay. Um, Ameritrash. Usually what I hear referred to is direct player conflict, heavy in theme. Themes usually revolving around... Uh, fantasy, post-apocalypse, zombies, um, things like that. Um, generally, the major theme is death, destruction, and chaos. Um, also, <laughs> you usually see dice and plastic pieces. Those are pretty good guidelines. They're not absolute. Arkham Horror ha is a co-op, so you're not fighting each other. Um, Attack of the Mutants, the old Aquinto game, has no plastic, and Dungeon Twister has no dice. So those are good guidelines. I have a different set of guidelines I think is more all-encompassing um, one of them is, how do you describe the game? If it uses lots of exclamation points, the word dude and the heavy metal symbol, you got Ameritrash. I mean, think about it. I just got this third pink building in my tableau that gives me four extra victory points. As opposed to, dude, I've totally squashed your, zo your zombie squad with my cybernetic dinosaur. Okay, um, the other one is... I like tableaus, just so you know. If just you have the word tableau, it pretty much can't be Just I'm a fan of a tableau, but <laughs> go ahead. The other one is, if you were... What's the soundtrack that best captures the essence of your game? If it's Kenny G, you got a hero. <laughs> if you're playing Ameritrash, it's Motorhead. So. He's picking fights today. <laughs> He's picking fights. He's trying. <laughs> He's so, trying. With that said, my number five game is Claustrophobia. Uh, it was by, I think it's Asmodi. I don't know how to Asmodee? say it. Asmodee? Yeah, it just makes me laugh every time I say it. <laughs> it's designed by a dude named Croc. I don't know if he's behind the slow cooker or the ugly shoes. He's just a famous <laughs> designer. Um, the game revolves, you want to talk cool themes. It is about going underneath the tunnels of New Jerusalem in 1600 to fight the hordes of hell. I mean, how awesome is that? You got the Redeemer, this holy man, and his condemned warriors. And they all go around to shovel pickaxe looking things and blunder buses and beat the snot out of demons and um, troglodytes. It is incredibly awesome. It's a, it has the tile lane thing. If you've seen Doom, the board game, um, much better game, by the way. Um, you flip the tiles, you never, you know, it's always, there always be rules on it. The demon player's gonna lay the orientation. Real simple com, um, combat system, very elegant, simple, plays in about 60 to 90. Excellent game and an awesome expansion. I just landed it. It has Hellhounds. I mean, how awesome is Hellhounds? See, that's the thing about these games. The word's awesome, dude, and because it rules, or generally come up. Why do you do that? Because it rules. It doesn't have to be a realistic. It just has to be awesome. So that's my number five, claustrophobia. I'm going to say again, first of all, you really need to come to a con because you're going to have your own fans there, and now you're going to have your own, like, haters. <laughs> so you need to come to a con. They're, they're almost made for you. Dude! Yeah. you got to be there. <laughs> Okay, my number four Hell, game. Hellhounds. Hellhounds. My number four games is Dinosaurs of the Lost World, another old game, but this is a real storytelling game. There's a there's a roll and move mechanic. Your explorers trapped on a plateau with a bunch of random locations scattered around there. There's a roll and move that limits how much you can move on the plateau, but you find different things. You find the Apatosaurus Swamp, you find the, the geyser, you find the lava pit. And the coolest mechanic of this game is every time you find one of these locations, you go on an adventure hmm. to, to try and get victory points. If you've got a uh, camera, you can get take pictures of the things. Sometimes you have to fight the creatures that are up there. You find lost tools most of the time. You, here again, you might have to just roll a die and let it happen. But if you happen to bring the right equipment, like to go to the Tyrannosaurus lair, if you've got a shovel or an egg crate, you get some cards that will let you move a specific number of points and let you collect the items that you want to collect. Then at the end, again, for the resolution, you've got to get a specific item, either a tarpaulin that you can fill with hot air to float off of the plateau, or find a map to get through the caves off of the plateau. So there's a, a resolution aspect to finding enough things, but then you have to get away. I think that this game, uh, the one thing about this game I'm surprised is that nobody has rethemed this game, because I think something like this doing it where you've got espionage adventures or 
finding uh, lost planets or even a Japanese anime theme like this would really, uh, I'm, I'm surprised nobody's done that yet. But my number four Ameritrash game has got dinosaurs. 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 Dinosaurs with an exclamation point. Do they rule? Dude. Dinosaurs of the Lost World. Now this, All games can be improved with dinosaurs. Now this says it has a solitaire version. Is it worth? It's okay. Uh, the solitaire version is, is basically trying to collect enough uh, points and get off of the uh, uh, plateau in a limited number of turns. We've got it our, works. our little local con coming up, Tornado Alley. Would you mm -hmm. want to play that there? I can. Mm -hmm. I would like I've to even made up that. some little uh, cheat sheets play, please. because <laughs> you have to keep track of your uh, equipment as you go. So I've got some cheat sheets made up for that. I would love to play that. All right. That's never even hit the radar. My, if you ever on BGG and um, you go to my lower rated game, sort them and go to lower end, almost everything down there has comments, this game needs a dinosaur. <laughs> I mean, they just make everything. So do you with, own with that? or without exclamation yeah. points? Do you yes. own that? Oh yes. You own that? Oh yeah. Hmm. It has dinosaurs. Yeah, we two guys. I've we never played, even seen we it. played it. Really, you two have played it? Yeah. yeah. Where have I been? I have not been where they have been apparently. All right, mine is my number four is Tide of Iron, uh, Ameritrash war game. Uh, tons of little soldiers, tanks. Um, uh, it really feels like you're playing with toy soldiers from when you were a kid, but they all have purpose. Um, you can mix and match. You can have uh, your MG along with some elite units or an officer and just do a lot of different things with them. And it just has that same kind of bling appeal where you've just got, number one, you got the plastic. Uh, I love the World War II, if we want to call it a theme, I love that. And it just, uh, it just brings that out on the board and uh, feels like you're in a big sandbox. Um. Yeah, the let's see, what was I on that thing? It's got a lot of great expansions to it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's very fun. One yeah. A Games just picked it up because uh, Fantasy Flight isn't doing it anymore, and uh, hopefully they'll support it because uh, there's a lot of good stuff already out there for it, but a lot of expanded things as well. And what was funny was that when we I was hanging out over here and Bart was showing me the new Ogre game, that big beast, and I happened to have my Tide of Iron, which has two expansions in it, inside of it. I have a fancy how I organize and fit it all into one. My game weighed more, mm -hmm. quite a bit more. <laughs> a, well, those tiles and tile oh, yeah. iron, are, they're, they're cardboard, but they're darn near wood. Right. Yeah, I mean, you have know, shove all that into that big, massive coffin box. Yeah, and, I'm surprised you didn't blow it out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, my number four is a landmark Yes. in the world of Ameritrash. It is... Fortress, hope this holds, it won't be like your 1812 Give me a room. <laughs> yeah, I got it up tight in there. Fortress America, Milton Bradley, um, 1986, has been remade. I'll comment on that in a second. This game is Red Dawn in a box, and I don't mean that junky garbage movie that came out a couple years ago. I mean the real one. It came out from the 80s, who was Patrick Swayze. Mm -hmm. Tom Cruise, was he in that? No, no, Cruise was not, but Charlie Sheen. That's it. I mean, it was Gray, the guy who over Gray, it. Everybody, almost yeah. everybody in there was, you know, yes. into somebody. So yeah, they were definitely going off of the popularity of that movie. Um, great plastic. The temple themes, everybody in the world gangs up on America except for Canada. Some would say it imbalances the game. Canada. I say it's because any nation that turns out a band as cool as Rush is not going to attack America in their time of need. <laughs> but the rest of the world gangs up. you got three different org groups, one from Europe, one from, South, from Central South America, one from the Pacific. Never shall they meet or agree to work together because they don't like each other. It's just a big land grab on America. I think 20 cities, if they can get it, they win. America is takes place in the future, late 1990s. <laughs> that always amuses me. I do like Saddam Hussein is on the box cover. I wanted, the reason my, my cover looks so banged up, I got it in an auction because I wanted the Saddam cover because you score extra Meritrash points for that. <laughs> but um, yeah, basically the, um, over, you know, America starts weak, starts to build up, gets lasers online. You got Wolverines bouncing around in there. It's just a big box of awesome. The reason I said this thing's a landmark is because before this, we war gamers had Ameritrash games. We just didn't know what to call them. You know, we had stuff like Asteroid, the creature that ate Sheboygan, Attack of the Mutants. We didn't know what to call them. They sure as heck didn't feel like Squad Leader and Victory in the Pacific, stuff like that. So I think we called them sci-fi war games. Just, they're fun, we'll just put them over here. 
suddenly this um, um, this game comes along, I think it was in 88, wins the Origins Award for Best War Game of the Year, and the War Gamers went nuts. How dare they give this to this not war game? They got mad, went off and formed the Charles S. Roberts War, which was the breaking point what separated war games from Ameritrash, and they took on their whole new meaning. It was years later that the Eurogamers come up with the phrase Ameritrash to try to be insulting, but like their games, they failed. I'm sorry, <laughs> who came up with that? Eurogamers. Okay. Eurogamers. It's supposed to sound a little bit more hoity-doity. It did. It, so yeah. they tried to do it to be insulting. I didn't insulting. even want to try to pronounce it. But like their games, they fail. And the Ameritrash's award is a badge of honor. Judd Vance also goes by Air Judd on BGG. <laughs> Send all complaints there, please. <laughs> anyway, the, um, so yeah, that was a real big landmark as to what <laughs> separated the two, and they kind of, it become it's kind of a genre of sorts. There's still a lot of mixing, and it gets a little confused to, to do that. But anyways, um, so there was a remake made. Fantasy Flight put it out, I think, 2010. I have it. That game is dead to me. The reason yeah. why is because they removed Kansas City as one of the cities. <laughs> and if you're going to diss my Kansas City brothers like that, you either better put it in Wichita oh, so you can see us sure. in the air capital of the world, or put it in Manhattan so you can go see Bill Snyder, who wouldn't want it. But if you're not going to do that, you better not disrespect the Midwest. And because they did, the game is completely dead to me. And I went and got the Milton Bradley version because of that. Also because Saddam Hussein's in the box. That's my number four, Fortress America. Ooh. Making, making friends. <laughs> I, I like all games. But my number three Ameritrash game is Princess Ryan's Star Marines. This is designed by Mark McLaughlin, same guy who did uh, Rebel Raiders on the High Seas about the Civil War, Napoleonic Wars, Wellington, Kutuzov about the Napoleonic era. This one is a card assisted game, but you've got space marines with special capabilities. You've got the weapons that they carry. They, a princess has been kidnapped. So you move across the board, which Maybe the locations you find, they may be random locations, and you have uh, conflicts going across the board. At the end of each conflict, you get some information on where the princess is being held. You get some points to, to let you get promoted. You let you get some dispatches that the little rule breaker cards, <laughs> and then the resolution at the end is if you've made it, you and your squad has made it across the board, at the end of the game, you try to find where the princess is in the palace. Uh, this game, you know, it's it's a it's a co-op game. Although one person can be the bad guys, I think they were called the alliance. But one of them can be the bad guys. But basically, you're you're all. Uh, it's a co-op game, except there's one card that will let you mess over one person. There's a jagged piece of metal. That, piece of shrapnel. If somebody's getting obnoxious, you can take that player out for one round. <laughs> then he's back in the game. Um, the one thing, the rules are pretty poorly written. They call for a lot of house rules. The other thing is there can be a pile-on uh, mechanic for the winner because if you win a skirmish, the rules as written say you're the person that gets the information on the princess, you're the person that gets the dispatch, you're the person that gets the promotion points to buy more Hmm. weapons later. We find that it plays better if you split those things up. Let whoever played the best character decide which one of those three things he gets, then the second gets, <coughs> third gets the remains, so that you share the wealth so everybody stays a little more even. But this game, Princess Ryan Star Marines, is my number three. I've still seen it available in some friendly local game shops. For how much? Um, re retail price. Really? The one I, I'm pretty sure the one I saw down in, in uh, Oklahoma City hmm. at Game HQ, yeah, I think that was still at um, retail price. Yours is in good shape. Did you buy this originally? Yes. Mm -hmm. wow. See, I've, I didn't know you had this either. I've, I've always kind of wanted to play it. We can do it sometime. Huh? You haven't heard of it? Mm. Yeah, I've seen it and I heard it, it, it played well with a few issues, but... Mm. It, it, it plays well. The rules are the yeah. problem. Huh. I feel like I'm watching the show. <laughs> that was great. Uh, Twilight Imperium 3. Um, it's got the Euro, kind of some Euro mechanics mixed in, but man, is it. It's, it's, I don't throw Epic around too much, but it is an Epic game. Uh, my only problem is actually getting it played. Uh, I think I played it, uh, it's probably been three years ago, 
and we had a lot of new players and and uh, because of that it drug out so long that we had to take a bunch of shots of the board and I bagged everybody's individual gear up and and uh, it ended up being quite a bear to get it done but it is uh, clearly my number three the little spaceships the powers you have the just the the interaction and the euro mechanics that have gone into this third edition um, just really kind of rounded out for my definitely my space game for Ameritrash just can't really get it played as much is this like a 4x no it's um Con i mean is it space conquest of planets what's this yeah what's the there's scale? that there's you've got cards that are going to send you down a certain road that you're wanting to achieve okay um you're you're doing a role uh, kind of a role selection deal where it allows you to do certain things and then you're there's some wonky things where if you're the first player you're always going to take the vp role it just is going to give you the vp okay. so there's certain things that are laid out um it just feels it, it really brings the feel of an interstellar like a massive level okay. of of there's some diplomacy in there there's there is your ship building um it it just brings that space overall okay. heavy theme not heavy but but the grand scheme of things but i'm not sure that whether the size of it is unique to your group because i know um there's a uh, geek list that's being formed on Board Game Geek for the games to play at Geekway in St. Louis, which is in about a month. <laughs> and on uh, that website, there's people asking to play Twilight Imperium, but even there, they're saying, please have the rules read, please understand the game. It's going to take long enough anyway yeah. at Geekway to the West in St. Louis. <laughs> He's plugging. That's good. It's a game plug. Yeah. So it. It really bring. I haven't played it in so long because of that, but every time I've sat down, it's just, it just really hits the theme home okay. of that grand space. You know, I'm a little planet and I'm moving out. There's ex, there is exploration, but I wouldn't really call it okay. a 4X game. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but. All right. Okay. By the way, I will make the disclaimer. I poke fun at Euros. <laughs> I don't hate them. I have some. I, I think some are okay, some are not so okay. Yeah. okay. But I mean, I poke fun at the man KU, even though Will Chamberlain is my favorite player of all time. So. Yeah, you love party games. Yeah. That one he does. I'd rather play a million euros than I'd rather play a million. Euros. A million euros! A million. Exclamation point. Yes. No. <laughs> um, no, that's a ah, disgust. Anyways, my number. What are we on three? Yes. Hero Scape. If you can play this dude, I mean, without saying dude, and flashing metal signs, and using the word epic and awesome, if you can do it without it, check your pulse, because you got to be dead. This thing is awesome. It's awesome sauce in a box. If you've ever seen it, it has some Lego system for interlocking and laying out your terrain. Different colors, like green for forest, and I think in brown for hills, and red for lava, and blue for water. And um, you set this up, you recruit your squads, you get all these little squads out there. Some are like little squads of three or four, and some are their heroes, big guys, rolling more dice. You get so many points, you draft up your dudes and go fight. Common theme in Ameritrash, um, I might pronounce wrong, Star Trek episode, Gamers of Triskelon. Does that sound right? I think so. Mm. Okay. Basically, you get guys from different periods and put them all together. Um, for example, the, um, oh, was the Duel of Ages, I th or... That sound right? Yeah, Duel of Ages has different. You know, yeah, you can have Wild Bill Hickok with yeah, sort of rock type of thing. Yeah, like it's one of those type of things. The the serious players will get in there and say, "Well, I want my orc squad with my infantry, with my orc archers and my orc and whatever you want." American Revolution soldiers with a zombie squad, the men in black, some cybernetic gorillas, and a dinosaur. And why? Because you can, and because it's awesome. That's why I said that's what a lot of these games come down to. Very simplistic combat system. Not a lot of depth there, but it is just so awesome to play and look at. It's incredible. Um, I think it's out of print. Costs an arm and a leg. My friend Aaron has like everything ever made for this. Multiple copies. I play his copies. If you can't afford to do like me and bum off somebody who does, it is well worth your time, and it's just amazing. We set these boards up. We have snow because the yeti guys have an advantage in snow running right next to it is a lava river why do we do that because we can and because it's awesome <laughs> i have a giant bridge set up on every one of my games because it's awesome it all comes down we set up the craziest terrain and the craziest combinations because we can now is this your only set 
No, I borrowed the box from Aaron. Okay. It's so an you, empty you box. You literally have none of them. I have nothing. Yeah, it's because most guys, when they play this, they're bringing tubs. Oh, yeah. He has tubs and tubs. Okay, yeah. He has tubs of terrain he brings. Right. That's the key. Yeah, the tubs come in. And what? So he even does the setup for you, doesn't he? No, we, we set it up Okay, together. you set up together. We I was start, say, because setup He is... starts on one end, and I start on the other, and okay. we just meet in the middle. Um, so, yeah, it's a great game. My number three, Hero Skate, Milton Bradley. Yeah. And I have three tubs and a bag full of ASL stuff, advanced squad leader <laughs> stuff. So that's where my tubs come into play. My number two Ameritrash game is Shadows of Camelot. It's another uh, co-op game. You are the. It's a. It's a familiar mechanic. It's basically a rummy mechanic. Sometimes you know you've got to get three of a kind. To, to beat the picks. You've got to have a straight to beat these guys. You've got to play this kind of card to get the Holy Grail or to get the um, the sword. I can't mm -hmm. even remember the name of the sword. Excalibur? Excalibur. Is, yeah. To get Excalibur. Um, so the mechanics aren't really that good, but the, in, but, the, but the enjoyment is the theme that gets pasted onto it. Uh, one of the, just a quick story, one of the best sessions of this I ever played. This was this was one of my favorite open gaming experiences hmm. at WBC because we had an eight person game of Shadows of Camelot with two traders. There is a trader mechanic in this game. I was one of the traders and I revealed myself like three turns into the game to just hmm. mess with people a little bit. So everybody was watching me. They went through the game, kept going, kept going, kept going. And finally there, it was, well, if we do this one thing, we can make the game go on a little further. And the person whose turn it was says, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put down a siege engine because nobody had suspected <laughs> that Chris was the other traitor. It was, it was a very enjoyable time. Hmm. So Shadows of Camelot, uh, like I said, co-op game, lots of theme. And the resolution for this game is whether at the end of the game, whether there is a traitor, or, and if there is a traitor, he might turn some good results into bad results at the end of the game. Everybody thought they won the game, and instead they lost. Yeah, I'm imagining a big uproar when he said, no, we're not doing she, that. She. But, oh, uh, no, we laughed. So, I mean, a positive they were, uproar. They were part of our anatomy that were laying on the floor. We <laughs> yeah, were laughing right. so hard. Yeah, the uh, and the traitor's not. You don't always have a traitor. Right. But everybody's paranoid. It's a possible in this game. mechanic. Yeah. Is it kind of like Battlestar Galactica? Well, yeah. It's the. It's like the 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 one before BSG, and uh, that some people like BSG because you were guaranteed by the second half of it to have your traitors in. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one, you never know. It's a random card draw, and it might not get drawn. Right. The uh, traitor. Right. Right. And uh, but everybody, it always feels like there's a traitor. Every time I've been in, I mean, we've literally finished and went, "Wow, we won." Nobody was the traitor. Right. So mm -hmm. because and you're like, "Why did you do that?" Well, I just I thought maybe you were the traitor. Right. So, yeah. Very uh, very enjoyable. I've seen that starting to make a resurgence. It kind of died off when BSG came out a Resistance, and I've been seeing. Uh, Shadows Over Camelot rehitting the table more and more often. It's like people are going back to it. I, I, I think that uh, Battlestar Galactica, the the theme is bigger than the mechanics. Oh yes. Yeah. Whereas, well, yeah. whereas here, I think the mechanics support the theme yeah. better. Yeah, uh, BSG is actually dead for me. I was wondering if it was like that's why it's getting better. Bart and I used to love BSG. We won't play it anymore. It's. Mm -hmm. People reveal almost instantly to get an advantage, and yeah, it got real gamey. Yeah, yeah, the mechanic, right. like you said, the mechanics are boring. It got real gamey, and yeah, well, we'll do a thing on that at some point in time. All right, my number two, Age of Empires three, no longer called that. If you're looking for it, it's going to be Glenn Drover's Age of Empires. I think is what it changed to. Hmm. Uh, it was a licensing deal with Age of Empires three. Um, it's a uh, it's a worker placement game with exploration to the new world. Um, uh, you've got these great little plastic minis, um, who you send over to the new world, whether it's a soldier, a priest, um, if you've got a captain on a ship, it just really, really works well together. Um, it's, it's an older game, uh, but if I go to a board game night and somebody just happens to have it, I've got my copy, but it's currently boxed, I'm in that in a second. I love that game. Uh, have you played it? Yes, I have. You played it? No. Nope. Mm -hmm. Are you like, what, just generally? What I, I enjoyed it. I mean, I would play it again. It wasn't, um, 
I thought there were a few of the mechanics that were a little, uh, lots of effort for a little payback. Mm -hmm. But other than that, no, I, th I thought it was good. I thought it was excellently balanced, interesting, yeah. I love worker placement, but it just with the way that track is and kind of how you're planning in the, for the future and nothing's, it's not always immediate action over there, the way you can kind of store up on, uh, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of your guys before you ship them over. You know how you're mm -hmm. sending your, your guys over in the mixture you do it in. Um, that's, what, that's what really does it for me. I just love it. See, I guess the game that it reminded me of that I enjoy more is Dominant Species. Dominant Species is way more complex mm -hmm. than Age of Empires. But the idea that you're, you're trying to plan out your, I think it was like 12, you've got... 12 choices of actions and the sequence of the actions is is uh, part of the key to being successful. Oh, I have to do this first before I do this. Oh, I planted these guys here, but I didn't have a chance to move them, so now they're dead before I get points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Age of Empires 3 or Glenn Drover's Age of Empires, I believe. My number two. <clears throat> This one is was, War yeah. of the Ring, Fantasy Flight. See, their other game might be dead to me, but Fantasy Flight I still consider almost <laughs> the kings of Ameritrash. Um, this is the Lord of the Rings books put into a board game. Um, uh, let's see, when did it come out? About 2004. I think they made a second edition of it. I don't know when. Um, this, 12 or 13 or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the game is it's mind-blowing. It's, wow, when I played this, I had to own this. Um, it took us, every time Aaron and I play, it's almost always five and a half hours. I mean, it's big, it's awesome. It always comes down to the fellowship is in Mount Doom and are they gonna get it in there or not? Uh, good guys win by chucking the ring, just like the book, or scoring so many conquerings of Sauron's territories, of alternate, Sauron has to conquer so much of the free peoples, or corrupt the, the fellowship. There's corruption points on there. So there is this war aspect going on. So it's more than just, you know, Frodo hiding and stuff like this. Um, you have the Nazgul. I mean, it's all in there. I mean, it's fortunately Tom Bombadil's only one card, so you don't have to waste too much time with that loser. But um, <laughs> so much of the stuff is incorporated in this game. It's a dice system. You roll the dice, it has your rolls on there. What you can do with those dice and how you allocate it. You're mixing cards, you're mixing movements. Um, just wow I mean there's just that's about the only word you can use for it and you have to flash a sign and say dude when you're playing it because it's the only the gripe about it is the plastic looks a little too similar unless you're one of those guys who paints all your stuff um, but you play a few games every you kind of get the feel for it your Nazgul will tip over if you don't super glue um, washers to the bottom of them um, little tips there but um, yeah the game's great great board everything about it's great every time we play this thing it's been awesome that's my number two War of the Ring Cool. All right. Now, my number one is probably a game that, again, many people have not heard of. This is a game called Moonshot, the game. We found it. Um, it used to be sold at the Kansas Cosmosphere, which is where Liberty Bell 7 was restored and is now on display. That's our, our local space place. Mm -hmm. Moonshot is a game where you are uh, trying to complete the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo missions in order to gain, uh, when you complete six missions, you can then try to go to the moon. I mean, that sounds, it, it, the game is simple, but the thing that's cool about this game is the bits, because the cards you've got, you've got cards for each of the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo missions where you're trying to, you have to have the right kind of uh, launch vehicle, the right kind of capsule. Sometimes you need a lunar module. Sometimes you need a target, an Atlas Agena target, in order to uh, do some of the Gemini missions. And then you've got a deck of cards that have that equipment. And then other things like uh, the monkeys into space provide an event that can affect things. Uh, some of the problems on the pads, or sometimes some of the things that went good in the space program. Then as you move around and complete your missions, You've got little discs that have the actual uh, mission patches for each of the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo missions. So that is cool. there's a lot, and the pieces that you're moving around are miniature lunar modules. Mm -hmm. So the bits in this are good. And again, the, the ending resolution, because it always, 
every time I've played it, it comes down to a race for somebody trying to finish their sixth mission and then reassemble the parts they need to come redo one of those missions and move to the moon. So my number one Ameritrash game is Moonshot. Who is the designer? Does it do you, you know? know I don't remember. You know him? He's on board. He's on the geek. Hmm. I'm pretty sure. Because you're right. This uh, I had never seen this until you brought it, and then uh, we were asking you where it came from. And I think did you just do a shot in the dark and bought it when you were at the Cosmosphere, yes. thinking it might be good? Yes. And then you were pleasantly surprised. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like to play it right. sometime with you. Yes. Okay. We can I, do that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm the, the designer that's on the geek and a real good artist too. And um, yeah, I checked it out to see what it was and saw the game and I thought I'd like to play that sometime. Hmm. Well, I'll go on to mine and do you have it in there? Just uh, shout it out when you get it because let's give him a little bit of credit or her. Could be a her. My number one is Zombie Side. Somebody called that before he was thinking, he actually sent me, did you send me a message? I said, I hope me? you put it on there. He goes, you better have it on your list somewhere. It's Zombie Side. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's number one. I didn't talk to him about it. We try to keep, we try to surprise each other even with our list. Zombie Side, cool many or not, made the big splash with the Kickstarter. Uh, they've come out with their season two Kickstarter. They're supposed to be having their third one soon. Um, what I can tell you about zombie side, tons of zombies coming at you. You got your survivors. What it brings to the game is the feeling of the horde. Um, I've got a buddy that's not a board gamer, but he loves zombies, uh, cop buddy. And I showed him the game, immediately got addicted. His sons love it. It's his father's son time. Um, I'll go visit him just randomly at his house and it'll be up on the table. <laughs> I'm thinking, yes, I've built a gamer. The the theme that that the zombies just keep coming and there's more and more and more and you can survive it but you there there's some wonky like game rules in there that some people don't like uh but it but it definitely brings you that feeling of the impending horde that's coming down on you and and it starts slow and almost has that thematic feel where it ramps up and by the end of it i've got guys that i'm not even they're playing, you know, I'll be at work and I'll get a text and it'll be a photo of uh, two survivors surrounded by 30 zombie models coming in and I'll be like, did you make it out? You know, I mean, so it really just brings that theme in there. And before we're done, I'm curious, I want to know some stuff about your uh, the theatrical background. Okay. I did, didn't know that from you. Hardcore engineer. Like you wrote aviation manuals right. on me like like mechanical for, manuals, for right? uh u.s air force manuals yes mm -hmm. i mean and very so uh, the the uh the theatrical thing surprised me so zombie side um if you want the feel of a horde coming after you and and you're battling through try zombie side you know it's blown me away you think it'd be easy but almost every zombie game i play sucks i mean i hated all things yeah zombie. i was disappointed by several yeah the um Last Night on Earth was okay. It felt mm -hmm. it felt just like the um, Touch of Evil, though. Same game, just different okay. plastic. Okay. And there's only two that stood out. And that one I just played for the first time last weekend. Zombie Sun? Yeah, and you, yeah, the better you do, the more they come at you. Oh, and yeah. you better get all your people up to the next level on your how many zombies yes. you kill. Because we had one person shoot ahead, and they just started hoarding us, and we weren't ready. Right. Um, the other was Dawn of the Zeds. Those are the only two that ever stood out that, wow, I haven't played them all, but I've played a decent amount. And Aaron and I have both been kind of blown away. Why do zombie games suck? It's such, it's such low-hanging fruit. For and, and again, to me, that, that's kind of what I was talking about with the, the, the three stages, the three acts. Mm -hmm. You know, the first act, oh, here, here's who we are. We're, 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 we're stranded here. And then there's conflict, you know, the, the conflict of how do you deal with these zombies that are coming at you? But the resolution of it is just like, oh, well, uh, we're, we're killing more zombies. And what did we do this turn? Oh, uh, we killed more zombies. I agree with you 100%. Zombie side definitely brings that slow build. Um, and then, then you have that crisis near the end, and then you hopefully achieve it's mission-based, where you've got a okay. mission to achieve. And then do you achieve it? Do you bring your people with you? It's something to talk about later. I even do one thing where, where I'll add it in, and I'm going to do it at Tornado Alley. I will have note cards that'll have real basic things on the back of them. Like uh, you may get the card that says for a story plot line, whoever's seated to your left, you're going to follow them around. You have an effect, you know, okay. affection for them okay. or whatever. Sounds like asteroids. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just brings them in or yours might be, uh, 
you are a hoarder of food. Usually food means very little in mm -hmm. zombie side, but you're getting them. It's almost like a bad thing because you didn't get a weapon. Um, but you're allowed to keep two things handed, but your other three spots, if you find food, you will grab the food. And so it's just kind of a, a little thing I'll throw in there to kind can of... I, can I be the person that uses too many exclamation points? Sure, yeah, well, I'll make one in there. Maybe you'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> so you might get it randomly. <laughs> Okay, and my number one say. has a little bit of a backstory. When I was about 2009, 10, I was just got back into board games. Geek, discovered these guys, just gaming at the Wichita Gamers. I had pretty well given up hope that I was ever going to play my old Avalon Hill games. You know, Battle of the Bulge, Midway, stuff like that. It was all Euro, 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 Euro. And I thought, hey, these things are so neat, and cubes, and wood, and mounted boards. They look so nice, and they're such a mathematical exercise. Let's go to what you do like. <laughs> well, I did like them. Two things woke me up from that. One was I played an abomination called Agricola, and it changed my view forever. Number two was... You have to have something to fill in for that. So I asked my friend Aaron, I said, what is this Ameritrash I keep reading? He talks theme and all this stuff, like, you know, dice and conflict. He said, tell you what, I'll bring a game next week. And he brought this game. Changed my life. Nexus Ops. The most epic, awesome piece of Ameritrash ever made. It has everything you could ever hope for. If you want to talk plastic, you put these things under a black light and they glow. <laughs> How awesome is that? How many exclamation points did I just use? Anyway. Um, plays about 90 minutes, two, three, or four players equally well. Simple combat, simple game. The rules are forever burned into my brain, and it didn't take many plays. It's just such, it's so easy and elegant in its Ameritrashiness. I mean, the pieces in the game, you got spiders, dragonflies, um, dinosaurs. They call them lava leapers, but they're really dinosaurs. You got these little robot guys making the first down and the touchdown symbol. If you're a KU fan, sorry, you probably haven't seen it. You'll just have to take my word for it. But the plastic is awesome. Everything is awesome. Every game changes because the map's entirely different. Um, this is the ultimate quintessential Ameritrash. It meets all defined definitions of Ameritrash. Theme, dice, um, let's see, the plastic bits, um, the motor head, all of that. It's all in here. Even lesser known ones. I mean... Garish artwork. If your box cover looks like it was made by Napoleon Dynamite, you're playing Ameritrash. Look at the name, Nexus Ops. There's no dinky donkeys and hey, that's my fish and things like that. We got Chainsaw Warrior. We got Nexus Ops. We got Monster Apocalypse. I mean, look at when you play Ameritrash, you don't go on an Ops, you go on a Nexus Ops because everything about it is, is epic. That is my number one. There has been a remake made. The pieces do not glow. I. Is it dead to you? No, it's not dead. They didn't oh. diss. They did not diss the Midwest. I would definitely play it. I preferred this because I like the glow in the dark plastic. Right. I was sure that one was dead to you. And before we get asked, hey, where, where, where'd you have this? I had a hard time keeping Monster Apocalypse off of this list. I tried so hard. I mean, well, you, you can grab a monster. But you and, managed to squeeze it in. Didn't you? Yeah, I mean, you grab a Cthulhu and slam him right. into a into a nuclear power plant. How awesome like is that? that? But I was like. I had like three I couldn't quite squeeze in, so I'm, we're going to get hammered about that, and uh, Earth Reborn is too hard to put together, the map. But now theatrical. We did consider it. So but let me ask one thing about Nexus Ops first. It appears to me, from my uneducated eye, that the four players are very, they're all the same. Is yes. that true? Well, you draft your armies. You, you mine points, and the mine the, will give you these pieces called ruby, it's money. And you can buy points, the different ones have, they have different advantages and different costs and different abilities. And you will draft your own army up. So you, while you're trying to mine and keep your money going, at the same time you're trying to meet your objectives, you, you get dealt a card every turn and might say, if you control more of the rock planes, you get a vic two victory points on your turn. So you can go out there and smash them or kill a rock crawler in a combat, you get a victory point. First guy to 12 okay. wins. So you got these secret objectives going on. So this is a, it sounds like a combination of Small World and Space Empires. Space Empires 4X or the original Mayfair? For Space Empires 4X. Okay. Hmm. Theater. Um, just said, after I uh, graduated from college and moved here to Wichita, uh, in some of my spare time I did some local theater, uh, done The King and Cinderella, The King and the King and I, done some uh, mm. melodramas for comedy, mm. did a couple seasons of Shakespeare in the Park, really? uh, British did, drawing room comedy, Agatha Christie mystery. You did this in high school and college? You no, were always in theater? I did uh, like one thing, two things in high school and none in college. Mm. It was just after I got here. And mm. I only do about 
a show every couple of years. So mm-hmm. it's, it's not a big hobby for me, but I'm used to getting up in front of people like this. Very impressive. Very cool. All right. Ham tag. We're out, guys. Ham tag. Ham tag. Dude, remember, dude, the sum dude. of all theme and bling. Yes, theme and bling. Or malevolence? Malevolence. That's card-driven games. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just <laughs> people remember it. See you guys. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.